Hey guys, AKRC guy here. Uh, another follow up video. Follow up to the Tarot 2D gimbal installation on the Phantom. A lot of you guys watched the installation video and you said, hey, great video, but you know, you really didn't show what you did on the inside. A great video on the outside, but what's on the inside? So that's what this video is about today. We're going to go ahead and open up the Phantom and show you what connections I made on the inside. To open up the Phantom, you need a few tools. First, you're going to need your prop wrench which is the standard one that comes with the Phantom. Some people also use a socket. You're going to need a two millimeter hex wrench, Allen wrench. And then you're going to need a very fine Phillips jeweler screwdriver. So let's go ahead and get started with that. If you balanced your props, it's a good idea to keep note of where they are so that when you put the props back on you'll get the repeat performance that you've been getting with your custom props. Also I screw the uh, nuts back on. Now this is going to change a little bit if you have the new self-tightening props. Good step to always check your props too obviously before you fly. That's the last thing you want to happen. Just have a prop fly off, something that was definitely avoidable. Some people have asked what kind of props are you using. These are props, I bought these from rc-drones.com. They're a carbon fiber prop, I think they're about 40 or 50 bucks for the whole set. And I paid a few extra bucks to have them balanced. Uh, the balancing job was okay, they did a little sanding, they added a little tape. I actually rebalanced them after I received them just to make sure they were to my satisfaction. This whole process only takes about two or three minutes to get the fan apart. Once you get the props off, put the props back on, helps protect the threads. Turn the fan upside down. That's where you're going to take your two millimeter wrench and you're going to hit up on each arm. There's three Allen head screws, bolts, whatever you want to call them. Two that are easy to get. One, not so easy to get because it's right against the legs, but you gotta kinda do it on an angle. Be careful if you're using these knurled grips that you don't sand or put a groove in your legs by rubbing it up against there. All right, there's three there. And then there's that small, fine Phillips screw. need to take anything else out besides these four pieces of hardware on each arm. All right, I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead and then I'll show you when we get the case open. Again, you only need to hit up these two outside holes here. Do not do these. This is what holds your motor in place. It's good to check those once in a while, tighten them, but uh, don't take those out in this, in this uh, process. And don't over tighten these. I've been seeing guys that are cracking their frames because they're over tightening them. Not sure why they're taking the bolts out in the first place, but some of them are being over tightened and they're cracking the frames. This also gives you another chance to kind of take a look at those uh, leg extensions. Again, these are five inch long, quarter inch dowels, and they're just sitting on the factory leg screws. And then I have a couple of real small zip ties. They actually fit real nice in the leg grooves there, stay on there nicely. And if you had to travel and wanted to use your case, you could just slide them out, put them back in when you get where you're going. All right, once you get all the screws out, you'll see that the top's actually going to drop down. You want to hold that together, flip it over, and lift that top up. Now, if this is the first time you've ever taken off your phantom lid, you're going to notice that it's kind of feels like it's stuck there. That's because you got two cables plugged in. One is the GPS cable, which you need to unplug from the NASA. That gives you a little bit of room. And when you're actually doing this conversion, I recommend unplugging the compass and pulling this, this cable all the way out. But for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm just going to set it off to the side. All right, let's take a look at what's inside of here. All right, once you get the Phantom open, 
um, you're going to want to take your fast shark transmitter. Now some guys have mounted this on the outside, some guys have stuck it on top, put it under. Where I installed it was right down here under the main deck. Inside the battery tray there's a groove on each side. That's where the USB cable lays for your, uh, your hooking up to the assistant. I ran it down the left side, lined up the antenna connection to the back of the Phantom and actually drilled a hole there. And then um, I connected my antenna up from the outside. It's actually not even permanently attached in here. I then took the cable that comes with the Fat Shark transmitter, and I'll show you a picture of that right now. And then I took the black, red, and yellow wires, the other two for audio, which I'm not using. And using the diagram, which I'm also going to show you, I connected those to the Tarot gimbal. USB adapter which provides 5 volts to charge the GoPro and the video out signal. So that black cable is the one that actually runs down the front leg <clears throat> and connects to this cable here which actually plugs into my GoPro. So out of that connector is four wires, two are for power, two are for video. I converted those to the Fat Shark multicolored cable which is video, audio, power, and ground. I did not use the audio and then that connects directly into the Fat Shark. Out of the Fat Shark for power, I have a two wire black and, and red. I connected that along with my JST connector. Those two twisted together and connected to the, the red and gray aux power that was in all of the original Phantoms, which is right here. You can see they just tapped into one of the the battery leads and they gave you this aux power. Now if you don't have that in your Phantom you could just come right down here to where the battery connections are and solder on a plus and minus and feed the same thing that I'm doing here. Other than that those are the two main components for the FPV system. Now I have upgraded my <coughs> transmitter and receiver to the Futaba T8J radio and I'm using the Futaba for the tilt control which is right here. I'm using channel 5 as an aux channel with my VR knob on the THJ radio. And now some people are using the stock radio. You have to hook up your connections to the NASA. Now that's a whole different video. I didn't do that in this. You have to use the NASA assistant. You have to enable the gimbal control. Using an, uh, a separate transmitter, all you have to have is an aux channel, which you then program your radio to do. So that aux channel comes out, goes through the other front leg, and down to the Tarot Gimbal, which I'll show you right here. Now the Tarot Gimbal comes with a short, essentially a servo extension. It has a, a plus a positive or female connection on one side, and then I use a servo connection to extend that through the legs, and then ran that into, again, my fifth channel on the Futaba. So where that connects on the actual board, I will have to show you on the attached diagram that I'm going to show you right now. All right, the Tarot gimbal is going to come with a small, short servo lead. It's going to have a standard connector on one end and the other end. It's going to break out the, the white, black, and red into three separate connectors. You want to take the white connector and put it onto the T-terminal, which is that top middle pin. You want to take the black connector and put it on the lower right minus pin, or any minus for that matter, and then just leave the red connector off, and that will give you full tilt control. One of the other things, I'm using the Mike Workman uh, PVC style mount, which keeps the tarot very low. You do have to, if you've already assembled your tarot gimbal, you're going to have to take it apart slightly because you need to mount the plate to the gimbal board the gimbal plate and then to the phantom first and then attach the bottom plate and so on. So there's very good instructions on Mike Workman's, uh, uh, his instructions that he includes with the, the gimbal mount. Um, other than that, um, everything else outside is pretty standard. I've got a the JST, there's actually a, a black and red wire that comes off of the gimbal board. I simply soldered on a JST connection and use that to power up my gimbal. And if you've seen the Tarot gimbal installation, essentially part one, you'll understand why this is, has a separation there versus just hardwiring it all the way in. 
main reason is when you fire up your, your Phantom, you want to allow it to obtain satellites, steady the IMU, and you don't want to be drawn any extra power that you don't need to. Once the Phantom has a connection and it's ready to fly, I simply plug in the Terra, wait about six seconds, it comes alive and steadies itself, and now I'm ready to fly. So, I hope that cleared up some questions. If it didn't, please leave a comment uh, down in the box. And please, guys, if you're going to leave a comment, uh, I'd rather answer your question than just get a thumbs down on the video. So if it's something about the video you don't like or something you didn't learn, please ask, and I'd be happy to answer the questions. I'm uh, pretty in touch with the email, so I try and answer them as quickly as I can. Uh, so feel free to shoot me questions anytime you want. Um, again, uh, the be beginning of the video is going to show you what cables you need, which you're going to need in my situation. You're going to need the Tarot USB cable, you're going to need the Fat Shark standard cable, and then you're going to have to do a little bit of soldering on the inside to make up the rest of the connections. Alright guys, hope that helped you out. Thanks.